Hello and thanks for joining us. Over the next few minutes I am pretty confident we are going to solve Christmas, show how individuals plus companies small and large can make an impact on the environment, plus we will have some amazing cetacean facts and figures. Now normally we'd record this kind of coming up after the interview, but I am joined by the Whale and Dolphin Conservation's Chief Executive, Chris Butler-Stroud, and I have complete faith in him. <laughs> Thank you. Now, tell us a bit about the uh, WDC. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a global charity, this, isn't it? It is. We've uh, been around now for about 30 years, and uh, we have a vision, which is that the world uh, can be safe for every whale and dolphin, and they can swim free. And we've been campaigning uh, against the threats against whales and dolphins and putting forward new ideas and trying to innovate in ways to protect whales and dolphins all around the globe. Because... I think people almost take it a little bit for granted, whales and dolphins. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm branded up today, as you can see. But I mean, this is still going on, isn't it? And, and there's a lot more threats. And it, it seems to be it's, we're the biggest threat. When uh, human beings weren't exploiting whales and dolphins, we had a rich ocean environment, which was full of, full of these wonderful creatures and full of fish and everything else that exists out there. Unfortunately, we've learned to exploit them in such a way that we've actually taken out, even in the last century, something like three million of the great whales uh, due to commercial hunting. And we're continuing to impact them through things like bycatch, where we're incidentally catching whales and dolphins in nets. We're still capturing them for um, export and showing around the world in small concrete tanks. But there is a shift now. We are moving to a position where more and more countries, more and more people appreciate these incredible creatures and just want to do something to protect them. Their impact is, is actually above the sea level as well, isn't it? Absolutely. You've got to think of uh, the ocean as being one of the huge carbon sinks that we have in the world. Something like 16 times more carbon can be absorbed by the ocean than terrestrial um, systems. And whales play this really, really amazing role in helping not only just to sequestrate carbon into their own bodies and take it down to the depths and keep it locked away, but they're also moving nutrients through the waters, which means we have things like phytoplankton growth. And it's phytoplankton and the other small microscopic creatures which are actually capturing huge amounts of carbon. One estimate says that if we saw recovery of whale populations in the ocean, we'd see something like 1.7 billion tonnes extra of carbon dioxide being absorbed. And that, you know, is something shows us whales have been our allies, despite all the things we've been doing to them. They've actually been our allies during all this time. So as an individual, um, what kind of things can, can we do? There's been a huge push on reducing uh, plastics, which is brilliant. But it's also almost create a sustainability plan for yourself. Think about all the aspects of your life that are having impact, how you use transport, how you, uh, the type of heating things you use in your home. All of these things will contribute to protecting whales and dolphins or cetaceans, as some people will call them. Things like if you eat fish, choose the type of fish that um, comes from a sustainable source. And I don't just mean sustainable fishing but make sure it's not having an impact on whales and dolphins getting caught in the same nets that are giving you that piece of fish for your oh, fish supper. By, by supporting the WCC, we, you've got your online shop, haven't you? There's, you can adopt a dolphin as well. You can. And these are real dolphins which are out there and we can take you into their lives and you can understand more about them. And in understanding more, people become more motivated to protect them. We have some people who've been adopting individuals, um, say off the Scottish coast, where we have a study taking place for over 20 years now. And these guys have been amazing during this last year, standing by the organisation and making sure that these dolphins get the protection that they really so richly deserve. As businesses as well, um small, medium and large. Normally at this time of year, they're thinking Christmas parties, they're thinking a bottle of wine for the supplier. Um, 2020 isn't necessarily that year. Um, however, a business can adopt a dolphin or whale, can't they? They can. And this uh, means that we can get even more uh, effort into the field to protect them. And I think many of the companies that do end up adopting a dolphin or get involved with the organisation are really companies which are committed to sustainability themselves. And there's a dialogue between ourselves and them and others where we are pushing forward those boundaries in terms of how sustainability can be hard baked into an organization. And I think for many colleagues of companies that have got involved, understanding that there are individual whales and dolphins out there 
that their very act is protecting, I think acts as a huge motivator in terms of saying, we actually share this planet and there's some remarkable other creatures out there. These are a gateway species. It can open up this whole world to people in terms of the impact that we as individuals and as companies can make. And I know that as soon as we started our partnership with you guys, motivation has gone because it's, it's gone so high because it's, it's exciting. You can see something beyond your actual work you're making a difference for. And I think that's kind of quite important to put across to, to businesses. There, there is that, uh, from a staff point of view, it's quite motivational being involved in, in a, a global charity like yourselves. Knowing on a day-to-day -day basis that there are creatures out there which are now alive because of companies making these kind of positive choices, I think that does act as a motivator and it helps drive us forward. It takes us out of ourselves and realise we're something part of something bigger, really. Now, let's rewind. I know um, 2020 for... Well, pretty much everyone, um, particularly charities as well, has been been a tough one. But it has been an incredible year for the WDC, as, as anybody who's seen what's happened with Little Grey and Little White. Um, it, it, you, if, if it wasn't for COVID, this would have been a massive celebratory year for you guys, wouldn't it? It would. And we, we've, we've tried to celebrate at the same time. And one of the approaches we took um, in terms of the relationship we've had with um, Merlin Entertainments and getting those two well two whales up to iceland out of china um has been to show that it's possible because for a long time people have been telling us you just can't create these kind of places but also to give people something to hang on to and give a bit of hope so with them going to iceland we've also not seen iceland go whaling now for two years there's a new relationship building up i think between the icelandic people uh, and Wales. The whaling hopefully now is something of the past. They are real ambassadors for the thousands of whales and dolphins that are still left in captivity, but it proves it can be done. Commitment, long time thinking. This is something over 20 years of strategizing and work uh, to get to this point, but it's possible. We just need to have the kind of ambition. Um, and we found that with supporters. I think our strategy during COVID, um, recognizing the challenge everybody's had you know, on personal level, on a business level, is to give people something to hang on to and give them positive communication during this time. And that's really paid dividends. I think we, we found supporters and partners like yourselves have, have found those motivating um, moments which just keep us going because I think we all needed that during this year. Going to Iceland as well, I, I believe that's just the start, isn't it? You, you're not just hoping to keep those two there. You're, you're hoping to add to them as well, aren't they? There's lots more still in captivity. We've got um, a large number of belugas which have been called off Russia, uh, have been supplied uh, into China. And there's been a huge expansion in dolphin area in China, particularly. In Europe, in the US, we're slowly now seeing the, um, at the end of this kind of business model that takes place in terms of exploiting whales and dolphins. And so we're seeing change. During this period, we've also had more um, dolphin area approach us and say, can we do something similar? So I think over the next five, 10 years, this is where that industry is gonna transform itself because we'll see whales and dolphins being returned to the sea to get back to their families, but we'll also see those that can't be put into places like Iceland where they can retire. And you're absolutely right. There's now uh, an increasing number of belugas which are starting to become candidates to be moved to Iceland because there's a lot more we can get into there. It'd be easy, the next one. Yeah, you know how it's done now. You've got your own plane, haven't you? So it'll be easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we, you know, we were we're incredibly grateful. It was actually a supporter that led us to um, the air, air transport company that um, actually got the belugas there. And um, it was... It was remarkable how keen they were to get involved to, to actually make it happen. Um, and you're right, it was all branded down the side of the aircraft and the Belugas were there in um, huge profile. Um, the Chinese ambassador was there in Iceland to welcome them. But you're absolutely right. The first time you do it, the hurdles are enormous. The commitment from people, the energy that went in, the lessons learned, all of those now are transferable to all these other exercises which can take place around the world as we go forward. Looking forward to next year. Um, I believe you've got some exciting things happening in the UK as well. Next year is going to be um, uh, what's basically called a super year when it comes to the ocean and whales and dolphins. We're working with a large uh, consultancy firm at the moment who are helping us look at how do you create the finance mechanisms to ensure that marine protected areas get the support they need going forward. So we're hoping to be able to announce 
new initiatives in that area, empowering local people to protect whales and dolphins and their marine uh, environment. Uh, we just actually crept into this year um, the success of getting three marine protected areas off Scotland established, uh, including off Lewis, where we've had a, a tenure project which has been studying the Risso dolphins there. But we're going to see this proliferation of protected areas. We're also going to see a growth in offshore uh, wind development, which of course the country and the world needs, but we also want to make sure that's done in a responsible way. So we're hoping to be able to publish um, a guidance to help offshore developers to be able to make sure they are doing the right thing, because most of the people involved in that kind of business do want to protect the marine wildlife at the same time. Uh, the Convention on Biological Diversity will be going forward with a huge action plan in terms of what we need to do next because biodiversity loss is really the other side of the coin of the climate crisis. Uh, we also will have, of course, COP26 taking place in Glasgow, and that will be uh, an opportunity for people to really grasp the fact that nature-based solutions, the way that creatures like whales and dolphins play a role as our allies in terms of protecting us and the rest of the planet, uh, will be seized upon. And I think there's going to be a huge shift in people starting to realize um, we can't just do this on our own. The environment around us, the planet, uh, will help us if we give it the right chance and do the things that we need to do ourselves. We're hoping also to announce from a supermarket in terms of their audit chain, a new system of starting to say how you can protect whales and dolphins in the way that you purchase goods to make sure there isn't an impact, especially things like fish. It's been a, a horrendous year for all of us in terms of what 2020 stands for. But there is an opportunity now. I think people have realized what happens with an existential threat like COVID. But they also recognize there's an existential threat in terms of the climate. And that's really brought it home to people. So I, th I think we're going to see people standing up, companies standing up, grasping the nettle and really making changes. Now, final question, because I think uh, basically, as I predicted at the start, you would cover everything. Um, we sold Christmas. Uh, we sold how we can make a difference. Uh, um, looking at the UK as a whole, because a lot of people watching this will be UK based. It has been interesting. I, I used to live in Scarborough when I was a kid and I never saw a dolphin. Whereas now when I look at the sightings, I keep being told, oh, yeah, there's dozens of dolphins there yeah. and they're up in the northeast. And and there's, it used to be everything was up in the Moray Firth where your Scottish office yeah. is. Is there a proliferation of dolphins moving around the UK? Has, have they moved, are starting to move further south or is it just one of those things? One, we have more people who are looking out for whales and dolphins and therefore I think we're seeing uh, more of them. Um, climate change is having an impact. We are seeing species and populations having to shift so they're actually coming into other areas. But there are parts of also the coast where the water is getting cleaner. So, um, you know, there's, there was always a fuss when someone would shout there's a porpoise or a dolphin in the Thames. Well, centuries ago, there were dolphins coming into the Thames because it was clean water and they would come across, the, you know, they, they didn't see a boundary at the sea and the, 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 the fresh water in that brackish area. Um, so I think, one, it's we appreciate them more, so we're seeing them more. But... Um, we are seeing some recoveries, and that, I think, is down to the efforts of groups like WDC and others who have committed to try and see them. That doesn't mean the pressures have gone away. I mean, a few miles off the Scottish coast, we still have Norwegian whalers being incentivized and subsidized to go and hunt whales. These are some of the same minke whales which are coming into Scottish waters. But I do look forward to the day when you can be in Scarborough again and just see whales and dolphins off the coast. Um, I, I think there's a treasure trove of these creatures out there. We, know, we need to know where to look, and we also need to just do that extra little bit to give them the opportunity, and they'll reward us by appearing for us. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, the, the threats are there. The fight is still there to alleviate those threats, but I'm still optimistic, actually, that whales and dolphins can play more of a role in people, especially around the coast, lives as we move forward. Um, I think we deserve it, and they deserve it. That seems to be a perfectly upbeat note to end on there. Thank you ever so much for your time. Thank you.